Saturday morning, time to kick off the experts program, and that means Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, is on the line with us. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Doing pretty good. What's on the agenda today? Unfortunately, we're still in the uh, throes of the coronavirus pandemic, but I think we're starting to see signs that where things are loosening up a little bit. And I wanted to talk about one methodology that has become really popular overseas for helping basically gather information about the spread of the virus and therefore making it easier for people to flatten the curve and open up. And it's something called contact tracing. So the idea behind it is that you get your citizens to download an app onto their smartphones that traces any time they come in contact with somebody else that has the same app. And if anybody that has downloaded the app is diagnosed with the virus, then you can go back and see who they contacted and see how many of those people also get diagnosed with the virus. So in essence, you can start to monitor how it spreads and how fast it spreads. So you can have better data. In Australia, that's something that they did and they got over 2 million Australians to download a contact tracing app. That's fascinating. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. They were able to use that to really reduce the spread mm-hmm. and to get better metrics on how it was spreading so that they could get out of their shelter in place and open up the economy a lot faster. So it's, it's just one element of how you can get to the point where we can all all leave our, our homes and stores and or rather restaurants and businesses to start opening up again. And this is called the COVID Safe app. Now, is this an app that's available in the Apple App Store or on any other mobile phone? Can you buy it here in the States or is it only available overseas like in Australia? No. So that's, a, that's the challenge, right? So it's available worldwide. It, it was created by Google and Apple in cooperation with each other. One of the few times that those two have ever cooperated. So they created this common app. So it doesn't matter whether you have an Android phone or an iPhone, it all works together. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's really popular in Europe and in Australia, not so much in the United States. Here, people are more concerned about their privacy and they wonder all this information that's being tracked and traced, who's going to use that information, how intrusive is it going to be, those sorts of things. And typically, the way to make this effective, you need about 15 people per 100,000 population to download and use the app. Okay. So, you know, when when you think about a place like California, that literally means, you know, millions of people would have to agree to do this. And very few states so far have deployed it in, in enough strength to actually be meaningful. Actually, only one state, North Dakota, has met the requirement, but everybody else is still far behind. Interesting, because here we are in California, which is a very technology-oriented state, yet it doesn't seem that they've made much progress or market penetration here with this app. Is it a free app? It's a free app. It's, okay. you know, obviously people have to opt in in order to use it. It's available. If you go into the app store and you type in COVID-19, you'll see it right there. They contact trace. And the more of us that do this, the better the data that our scientists and, and the authorities can have, the more likely they are to say, okay, we have enough people who are doing this so that we can really get a handle on how this is spreading and be less fearful of what we don't know, which is really the, the biggest part of opening up the economy is a fear that we don't know enough to really be able to determine you know, scientifically how this thing spreads and how to prevent it from spreading further. I was looking at some other articles here on Bloomberg where we're quoting this story from. As we say, there are so many different things that go on during this pandemic and it takes all kinds. But I notice a story here that drug dealers are posing as food delivery services to stay stealthy during the pandemic. And so I guess they go buy a fast food drive through get hamburgers, french fries and a Coke. And they put your drugs in the bag and and, (laughs) and make the exchange when they come to your house. Yeah. Amazing. It is. And and it's it's actually kind of interesting how all this change in behavior has also impacted all of the algorithms that banks and other institutions have used to detect fraud because our patterns of behavior have changed so dramatically. For example, American Express stopped requiring you to let them know if you're traveling overseas, for example, if you already have a pattern of traveling overseas. Well, now people aren't traveling. Right. So, but they still might be buying products in Europe and it's confusing the algorithm. And, some, and a lot of the, those transactions are being denied because it's confused as to well, why is your credit card being used outside of the country when you're not outside of the country? And it's, uh, it's meant that a lot of these banks have had to shut down those uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning tools to detect fraud because they're just not detecting fraud or giving a bunch of false positives. Mm-hmm. Part of the behavior, you know, we're enduring right now. Another interesting article, and I'm, I'm quoting from 
both uh, Huffington Post and the and the New York Post here, but uh, recent articles about we just mentioned you know drug dealers doing their business, and it says that um, sex workers are struggling to survive during the coronavirus, and coronavirus fears are decimating that particular industry. As uh, even the customers are afraid to go in search of what do they call the oldest profession in the world? So yeah, exactly, the oldest profession in the world. Boy, that's uh, uh, it takes all kinds, doesn't it? It does, and it's it's not surprising. I mean, there's a friend of mine traveled for for business to Tennessee this week, and you know Tennessee loosened their restrictions last week. So he said it was the first time he had sat in a restaurant in almost two months. Wow! And it was kind of a surreal experience um, because not only was the place largely empty, because people, even though the, the a lot of the restaurants are open, there people are still very cautious about going out. But he said it was weird getting your food served to you by a woman wearing a mask and rubber gloves. Right. <laughs> it's just, just it's just not something you would expect when you go to a, to go dine out. Exactly. Uh, but we're all going to have to get used to some of this for a while. It looks like Louis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, has been our guest today on Power Talk Radio online. AlvarezTG.com at Alvarez TG is the Twitter handle, and Louis, the toll free number for that IT. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM. That's 866-784-8326.